Hello friends, we'll be discussing an illustration which is related to the problem or the concept of when the amount is repaid in installment and you have to go ahead and prepare or calculate the average due date. So as we already know that whenever the amount is repaid in installment, there is a basic difference that we have to look after or rather the number of days from the loan sanction date until every installment that is paid has to be taken into consideration. We know about the basic thing that means the numerator will have the total number of such days and the denominator will have the number of installments that is being paid off. So that will give you the total number of days and that has to be added to the base date which will be the loan sanction date and that will give you the average due date by when if you pay off the amount there will be no interest that will be charged. To demonstrate this, we have an illustration for your reference and that will be used for your future references as well. So let's go with the illustration and figure out how to get such illustrations or such problems solved when a case of repaid in installment is there for calculation of average due date. Let's figure it out. So the question has been mentioned here. Now the question has basic two things that has to be calculated. First, that is average due date and the second that is interest. So let's read out the question first. Das brothers lent out 10,000 rupees to Kumar and sons on 1st of January 2011. That is what has been mentioned in the question. It is repayable in five equated annual installments, not monthly installments, annual installments which commence from 1st of January 2012. The loan has been sanctioned on 1st of January 2011. However, the EMI starts from 1st of January 2012. We have to find the average due date here first of all and then we have to figure out the calculation of interest which Das Brothers will recover from Kumar and Sons at the rate of 5% per annum. So now that you know the question here or that has been mentioned here, there are two basic calculations. First, the calculation of average due date using the formula that we have understood in the previous video. And after that, we have to go ahead and figure out how much is the interest that will be recovered here. So let's go ahead and figure out the average due date calculation first. Now the calculation here is taken in number of years, the reason being usually we take number of days but however in this situation we will be taking number of years because it is 5 equated annual installments. Had it been monthly, it would have been easy or justifiable to understand the number of days calculation. However, as one year has around 365 days, so it will be very difficult for you to calculate into multiplications of 365. So it's better you take into number of years as the calculation and not as the number of days here. So let's Let's figure out how it will be. Now as you know that the EMI is due date has been measured or it starts from 1st of Jan 2012. So the due date itself will be Jan 1. However, the years will be changing. So from 2012, 5 years, that means 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 and 2016, that has been taken as the due date. Now from the loan sanction date, that means Jan 11 or rather we can talk about 1st of Jan 2011, from that date until these many years, how many number of years have been passed out is what we have to take into consideration. So the formula also has been mentioned as per your basic understanding that means average due date here is equal to base date that means the loan sanction date plus 
sum of the number of years from the loan sanctioning date divided by total number of EMIs paid out. So we have to do a total of all the years that has been done from 2012 or rather 2011 itself where the EMI has been paid and the total number of EMIs that has been paid that means 5 EMIs in total. So the average due date calculation has been also done. You can see that the average number of years that we have figured out is 3 years. That means 15 upon 5. This calculation that has been done here shows that 3 number of average years has been added to the actual base date which gives you the average date of 1st of Jan 2014. So that is the average due date for payment of all the dues. Now, let's figure out what is the interest that can be calculated on this. Now, if you can see, the column that has been prepared includes amount, the due date, the number of days that will be rather the number of years that will be used from the loan section date and the product column as well as the interest is also mentioned in this. Now we have to figure out how many EMIs are going out and the equated annual installment will be of 2000 because 10,000 is the amount that is supposed to be paid off here. So every year 2000 will be paid off. Now let's figure out at the rate of 5% how much is the interest that will be charged here. The next column takes about or rather talks about paid on EMI date that means every EMI has been paid on Jan 1 2012 then 2013, 14, 15, 16 respectively. Now the next column informs about money used until 31st December 2016 because the EMI has been paid on 1st of January 2016. So for that whole year the EMI or rather the amount will be used as considered here. Now let's figure out for the first year, that means when the first EMI is yet to be paid, the amount that will be used is 10,000. That will be used for the next five years. Now, when the EMI is paid off, that means only 8,000 will be used for the next four years. Now, again, when the second EMI goes out, only 6,000 will be used for the next three years and so on until the last EMI date comes into the picture. And that's how the product has been derived. Hence, in the money used column, I have mentioned the amount as well as for the number of years it will be used. So 8,000, 6,000, 4,000, 2,000 respectively has been mentioned there. So that is a basic product that will be taken on the product column as well. Now we have to basically find out what is the rate of interest that will be charged at the rate of 5% for per annum. Let's figure it out. So if you find out the interest that is figured out for per annum is 1500. Now if we calculate the average due date that means if the lender gives out the money on 1st of January 2014 and if the buyer or rather the loan taker pays off the money after that then in that case both these people won't pay any interest here. However this money has been given in advance rather in 2011 that means three years in advance so your interest will be charged for three years so that means the total will be 2012 2013 2014 until the average due date that interest will be recovered by das and brothers or rather we can say das brothers will be charging interest for those three years so that will be the amount of interest that we'll have to look after for So this is the amount of interest that is 4500 that the Das Brothers can recover from 
Kumar and Sons provided they give it on 1st of January 2011. However, if as per the average due date concept, if they have given it on 2014, there is no interest that either Das Brother can recover or Kumar Brothers has to pay out to Das Brothers. So, this is how you figure out the calculation of average due date, especially when the amount is repaid in installment. I hope this video gave you a clarity about how to go ahead with the calculation of the average due date when the amount is repaid in installment and if there is any interest calculation, how to go about it. So, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.